Welcome to today's webinar, Optimized Golf Design. On behalf of Go Engineer, Shivani Patel, and myself, we thank you for being here today. If you have any questions, there will be a Q&A session at the end, as well as our contact information. We look forward to hearing from you. Design is not just what it looks like and feels like. Design is how it works, by Steve Jobs. This is a great quote. And when I got my first start into golf design, my mentor told me, if you're going to be a good designer, you need to know how to fit clubs. And this statement by Steve Jobs is perfect for golf. And as a fitter, our job was to make sure that we fit golf equipment so that it looked right, it felt right, and most importantly, it worked. The more putter fittings I did, the more I began to focus on two distances, 30 feet and 10 feet. 30 feet is the average length of the putt on the PGA Tour, or the distance the average approach shot is from the cup. And then 10 feet. This is the average putt a golfer will have eight times in a round. But what if you made all eight? When we got the incredible honor to present today, we focused on a 10 foot putt with a blade putter with a square square stroke path. And we wanted to validate the two design theories of face balanced and toe hang and to see if there was anything that we could learn or improve on this. Today presenting is Shivani Patel. She has a background in aerospace engineering. Me, I'm David Kersley with over 15 years of golf club design experience and it's a pleasure to be with you here today. Our key takeaways for today will be how we, how we use SolidWorks to design golf equipment, how simulation can validate design theories, and lastly, how we use topology optimization for golf. When it comes to the rules of golf, there's a couple rules as far as the dimensions of a putter. Most importantly, on the bottom right of your screen, there's a couple dimensions here. The A dimension is referred to as the width, and this is toe to heel. And that the A dimension cannot be greater than seven inches, and that the width of the putter has to be greater than the depth of the putter, dimension C. The other dimension that we pay attention to is dimension D, and that is the face height has to be less than or equal to 2.5 inches. Next, when we design a putter, we have to pay attention to what type of sole. In this image, you can see that there's two types of putters. The one on top is what we call a radius sole. And this type of sole is for a golfer that likes to move their hands around at a dress position, maybe to adjust to the contour of the greens or just feel. The one on the bottom is called a triplane putter, sole putter. And you'll notice that there's three planes on the bottom. There's a flat spot in the bottom. This helps golfers register the putter. A lot of golfers have won with this. Tiger Woods uses a putter that has a triplane sole. The one on top, Ben Crenshaw, noted as one of the greatest putters of all times, used a radius sole putter. So it comes down to golfer preference and the design intent of the putter. The center cavity. Sound is feel. And we're going to make this center cavity. And we have to be careful when we create this center cavity. If we get it too deep, it basically creates an echo chamber and can create an unpleasant sound to the golfer. You get it too deep, it can create a high resonance pitch, almost like a pingy sound. You get it too shallow, and the putter can sound muted, and the golfer will assume that no energy was transferred into the ball. It'll have a, like a mushy sound, and they'll think that the putter just doesn't hit well. Lastly, we're going to talk about loft. Most putters come with one to three degrees of loft on the putter. The reason this is, the golf ball weighs about 46 grams. What we need to do is when we hit this putter, we need the ball to lift. Why do we need it to lift? Because the ball, when it sits on the blades of grass, for example, like bent grass, the blades of bent grass grow in a vertical direction. When the golf ball is sitting on those blades of grass, it actually pushes those blades of grass down and creates like a little cup. And the ball is sitting down in it. Now, we start with one to three degrees, and we usually can adjust the hosels based on your stroke type. But today we're going to show you how to put three degrees of loft on that putter. And that'll get the ball out of that little divot and rolling into topspin towards your 10 foot putt. Lastly, we're going to focus on hosel configurations in the design. And we're going to focus this on the putting path. Having done a bunch of these over the years at design reviews, one of the things I focused on was being prepared for the, for the event. You go into a design review and I wanted to have as many variables set up as possible. So I created templates with global variables. And I've created a bunch of these and you notice if I hover my mouse, it kind of changes this preview over here. And I've got a putter here and I'm going to click on this one. And this one to me says triplane sole. 
arced mid body, flat bumpers, and inch units. And I'm going to click OK. And when I do, I've already got some face profiles created. If I hit my space bar, I've already got a view called an address at an add address position. Over here on the right, if I look at this face profile and I edit this sketch, we can see that there's a, all my, everything. My sketch is one fully defined, but two, we notice that these there's red E's. This means that there's an equation or a global variable associated with the drawing and that dimension. It doesn't mean there's an error. So I'm going to exit out and let's go over and look at our equations. Right click on it and manage equations. And there's all the variables that we use to create this putter. So let's get to designing. One thing I like to do is use my shortcuts. And that's the S key on your shortcut uh, on your keyboard. So when I hit my S key, this guy comes up and it's going to say, hey, let's do a boss extrude. And I'm going to pick on this sketch profile here. And you'll notice that it's wanting to extrude in a certain direction. Well, I'm going to reverse my direction. And for my distance over here on the left, I'm going to simply hit my equal key. I'm going to hit global variables. And I'm going to hit uh, top line thickness. Hit OK. And notice that we've now created our top line right off of that simple click of a sketch and uh, the global variable. Now underneath Boss Extrude 1, you're going to notice there's a little symbol here next to the left of face profile. I'm going to click on this original sketch. I'm going to hit my S key. And then in my shortcut manager, I'm going to have the Extrude Boss Base command again. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my contours. I'm going to pick this mid body and this lower region. This is called the bumper region. But I don't want it to start there. I want to reverse this direction. And I want to start it from this back plane here. And for my distance and my thickness, again, I'm going to hit my equal global variables and we're going to hit uh, mid body thickness. Hit the green check. OK. And you can see by having these set up how quick and easy it is to start making my part, our part. So we're going to hit face profile again, hit the S key. Now we're going to go make our bumpers. But before I do that, I've got a body profile back here. I'm going to hit this one. I'm going to hit my S key. And I'm going to use this one, ex Extruded Surface. And I'm going to create a surface so I can extrude these bumpers up to it. It's going to create the corners in that back bumper system. I'm going to do a mid-plane. And we're going to set this to maybe 2.5 inches. Looks good. Now we're going to go back. We're going to pick on this original sketch profile. We're going to hit our S key again, activate the shortcut. And this time what we're going to do is for our contour, we're just going to pick this bottom region or the bumpers. And for our direction, we're going to pick up to surface and we're going to grab that surface that we just picked. Hit the green check OK. And when we hide this surface and we look at our part, we've basically created this nice looking putter. All right. So now what we have to do is a couple things. We have to create the center cavity. We need to adjust the angle in which this part is created. And then what we need to do is put some loft on it. The first thing I want to do is put some draft on this part. If I go to my add address position, I look at this putter and I see everything is very perpendicular, parallel, or vertical, horizontal, depending on how you're looking at it. And imagine that the putting cup is over here to the left. Our eyes are looking this direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some draft in, on this body. When we do draft, I'm going to pick this neutral plane is the back of the face. And this face here, the face is to draft. I'm going to pick this top line right here. Oops. My neutral plane is here. And then I'm going to hit uh, about 22, 22 and a half degrees is about normal. Hit the green check. And you'll notice that this is drafted down. Now I'm going to go back to our add address position. And notice how that there's a line here and a line here. And notice how it's starting to push your eyes up to here. Imagine the golf ball sitting here. And this is a way to trick the golfer into subliminally looking at the golf ball, not at the putter. Let's go back to an ISO view. And let's go cut in that center cavity. So I've got a sketch here. We're going to do S key again. And we're going to do an extruded cut. 
And we're going to take that sketch and we're going to change from where it starts to the back edge. I'm going to reverse my direction. Only this time, I'm going to do offset from surface. And I'm going to pick this back face here. And again, this is that center, this is that sound chamber, that center cavity. So we're going to set this at about, about 40 thousandths deep. Notice at this point, when I look at my preview, it's actually not cutting into the top line. We're going to hit this little reverse offset button here, and that'll push it into that uh, top line. That'll create a little undercut. So now we got a little billboard. We can also put our company logo on. It looks pretty good. I'm going to hide this sketch. Let's hide this sketch. And lastly, what we want to do, I'm going to hide this sketch as well. So now we're starting to get a pretty good looking putter. Again, from our add address position, looks pretty good. Help us line up square. We've got the uh, arrow kind of pointing us towards the cup. And the last thing we want to do is we want to put on uh, some loft. So I've already created a plane in here that's predetermined with three degrees of loft. Now that I have this loft, I'm going to pick on it. I'm going to hit my, again my S key, and I'm going to do an extruded cut, cut with surface. Notice that this arrow is pushing away. If I cut away right now, I'm going to cut everything from the back of this plane off. I'm going to actually hit my reverse direction. And I'm going to cut everything off the front of the putter. We'll turn that plane off and that axis off. And there we go. So now we have our putter. The last thing that we want to do to this guy so that we can run simulation is we actually want to go in and create a hosel. And this is where the shaft is going to connect itself to the putter. So let's sketch on this top plane. I'm going to pick on here, I'm going to sketch, and we're going to do a circle, and we're going to define this guy. And we're going to set this guy equal to, we're going to go grab our global variable, and we're going to hit hosel post diameter, and hit our green check. And now we can control that. It's still undefined because it doesn't know its position in space. So let's make this relationship between this line and this line, this midpoint. We're going to make it horizontal. And we're going to put a dimension from the center to the origin. And this first dimension is going to be 0.892. And what that does is, in a single bend shaft, it puts the center line of the shaft through the center of the head. We're going to say OK. Hit the S key. We're going to extrude boss base. And again, we're going to control this post to distance by simply hitting the equal key here. Causal post length. I'm going to hit, go to the ISO view, make sure it's pushing upwards, and I'm going to say OK. So there's our hosel post. We need to fill it, this guy's out, but we can do that later. Um, right now, what we want to do, though, is we want to take this hosel and create some configurations for simulation. Double click on the hosel, and all the key dimensions associated with this hosel are now available to us. We want to right click on this dimension here. When we do, we're going to get the option to configure dimension. So click on configure dimension, and this is going to launch you into your configuration manager. And we want to create three configurations. The first one's going to be 0.892, and there's the value. I'm going to click here and I'm going to create one for 1.250. I'm going to put the value at 1.250. And this third configuration, 1.071, 1.071. OK? Now I'm going to call this hosels. I'm going to save it. I'm going to hit the apply button. I'm going to hit OK. When I do, when I go to my configuration manager, when I click on configuration, I now have three configurations. There's our 892, which is the same as our default. Our 1.250, notice our hosel is in the heelward position, and this 1.071. Now let's get ready for simulation. We have our three putters that have been finished out. You'll notice that there's radiuses on them. And the position 892 is the putter at the top. You'll notice that this position is where the hosel is, the center of gravity on each of the three positions. In the top position, 
the center line of the shaft is going through the center of the head, but the CG is actually five thousandths of an inch toward, out here towards the toe. This center, this 1.250, we've shifted the hosel back heelward to the 1.250 from center. And that moves the CG six thousandths of an inch heelward. And in our last position that we created, it did two things. One, it put the center line of the shaft through the center of the head. Two, it put the CG in the dead center of the head. But what became critical to us was that the outside diameter of the shaft, the shaft is going to go over this hosel post, became tangent to the outside diameter of the golf ball. Now we're ready to run simulation on our three configurations. Having received the three different configurations from Dave, we decided to run an analysis to see which one worked the best for the majority of putts. Testing, according to Dave, is generally done with a putter on a flat surface and just hit the putt over and over and see how the ball reacts. This sounds to me like a kinematic motion analysis, which is an add-in to SolidWorks. So having understood that, we decided on what we were going to test. Uh, we, again, are focusing on a 10-foot putt for each of the three putter designs. And then on top of that, we added a ball shift uh, position, so a quarter-inch toe and a quarter-inch heel to represent somebody accidentally or maybe on purpose hitting off-center on that club. So again, to repeat, we have the three different configurations and the three different ball positions for a total of nine analyses. Meant to answer the question, which putter head design produces the least angular displacement of the golf ball after 10 feet, especially if the golf ball is hit off center. Now let's switch over to SolidWorks. To run the analysis, we take the putter into an assembly. So I've got my putter, the golf ball, and a flat putting green, all arranged together with assembly mates. The golf ball is placed dead center on the putter green for every single analysis, and I shift the putter toeward and heelward using mates. In the motion analysis itself, I use a motor to pull the putter head back about two inches, and then I drive it forward about five miles per hour to strike the golf ball. Using solid body contact between the putter and the golf ball, I have a, uh, a bit of a jump because of the loft on that putter. We can see that here in the right view. There's a restitution coefficient of 1.0, meaning there's no energy loss between the putter and the golf ball when they collide. Now from there, the putter, the, the ball flies through the air and lands in, on the green and rolls. That's because of a second solid body contact between the golf ball and the green. For this one, I set it at 0.2, that restitution coefficient. That way to damp out the bouncing, we just have the roll and the inertia take over from there. Now the golf ball rolls fairly straight after this putt, and just visually it's hard to see if that is very off-center or not. So we use an angular displacement plot. This is measured between the center point at the end of the green, representing the center of the hole, the initial starting position of the golf ball, and the center point of the golf ball as well. So those three points are measured over time, and we're able to measure that angular displacement. The x-axis has been changed to overall displacement, linear displacement. That way I can be sure to measure for every single uh, one of these nine different analyses at exactly the right point in space or that 10-foot putt line. This data is exported to Excel with a simple right click. I'm able to extrapolate all that information and I say that so you know where I get the next set of graphs from. Now let's take a look at what those results looked like. Uh, starting with the center impact, uh, this is the golf ball at the center of the putter heads. And just visually, it does not seem like those are very far off target. But it's also difficult to tell which one is acting better than the others. Uh, it's a similar conversation for shifting the ball uh, for a quarter inch toward. Again, hard to tell the difference between all three um, and how far off center they really are. And finally, the heelward position. This one has a far worse uh, deflection over time. It's a little bit easier to see the comparison between them, but let's switch over to numerical results and get a better idea. Starting with the center strike, which is generally the most common way someone's going to be hitting the golf ball. The 
more traditional configuration with that 0.892 configuration. Um, it did produce the lowest amount of deflection off center was 0 0.002 degrees. Now for the others, um, the, the 1.25 and the 1.071, uh, those degree values are also quite low. And if we look at the uh, line plot at the bottom, over that 10 foot putt, all three of those deflections aren't enough to miss the cup. Now just quickly, the toe, it was a very similar conversation, so we're going to switch over to the heel. Now the heel degrees, the two classical designs, actually produce a 1.3 degrees shift over that 10 foot, whereas the new configuration that Dave came up with is actually uh, nearly half of that, so 0.654 degrees. Over that 10 foot putt, that is enough to still make the cup, where the others are large enough to miss it completely. We were fortunate enough to actually manufacture the club and start testing it in real life, and so far it has a lot of positive reviews. Having learned so much from motion analysis, we decided what else could simulation tell us about the future of putter design. So we decided to run a topology optimization. We started with a blocky putter head design and took that into the fine element analysis topology optimization inside of Simulation Professional. First, I fixed the area that connected back to the hosel and the rest of the shaft, saying that's really what's holding this thing in place. I applied a gravity load, as well as 10 gram weights in each of the posts. There's a one pound force as the putter head hits the golf ball. And then we apply a symmetry restraint to keep the putter head fairly symmetrical in the hopes of keeping that center of mass near the center. After our run, this is the result we produced, sort of an X-shaped design with a little bit more of a, of a thickness near the bottom. We are able to export what the topology optimization produced into a solid body like this, which then needs to be cleaned up using SolidWorks functions, and this is kind of our first pass cleanup of it. Pretty cool. If we compare that against other putter head designs that are on the market, uh, we see it compares pretty well with that top left shape, uh, which actually won the 2019 Shell Houston Open. It was fascinating for us to take that putter head design through a traditional design to manufacture process, but adding in that simulation element. And I'm really interested to see where simulation might take putter head design into the future. Thank you guys for watching our webinar. Again, this has been Shivani and David with Go Engineer. Thanks for watching.